But how will this leadership spill play out in Wellington on Friday? Well, joining us now is former National MP Chester Burrows. Hi, Chester. How does it work when you have a leadership challenge and you're all in the room together? Talk us through it. Well, it's been interesting because we haven't seen too many of those in the last few years. When we went from Don Brash to John Key, it was a, a done deal sorted out between the two parties, Simon Power and Bill English versus Jerry Brownlee and John Key, and so that was nutted out that way. It was pretty well a fait accompli under Bill English, and I wasn't there when the move from Bill to Simon went. But what traditionally happens, of course, is that um, people start quietly building up their support base until they're brave enough to go for broke. Um, then something happens like today and it's brought on and then people are, who, having done the numbers, rely on the support base that's already pledged and go about getting the numbers in the middle. The unusual thing about this is what you just pointed out there, Chester, that people go when they're brave enough and they think they've got the numbers. But mm, how much messier is this, given that Simon Bridges forced the hand of those challenging him this well, morning? I guess he wouldn't have done it if he didn't feel confident. I think that's fairly straight. And actually... Bringing it on, and and it's a little bit like pushing the button first on the chase or something, you know. Bringing it on and being the son to the one seen to be the one who brings it on um, shows some strength, and it may well catch the others off guard. So, if they were expecting to go in a couple of weeks, then all of a sudden, um, you know, it's going to be Friday, and they better be ready. So, you know, I, I think good on Simon for doing that for. Um, showing the metal. Potentially one of the better political plays from him? Yeah, I think so. I mean, anyone looking around would see that he's made a few mistakes, although I quite like um, uh, Michelle Bogue's line that he's another victim of COVID um, without being too tacky about it. The fact is that um, he was, or National was, winning the stakes until COVID came and, and Jacinda got the opportunity to shine. But, you know, you've got to look at history and we had the opportunity to do those things around... Um, or John Key did, around things like the global fiscal, fiscal crisis and uh, the Christchurch earthquakes. So what mistakes do you think he has made during this time? I think he's been seen to be too political and too full of rhetoric at times when there needed to be a bit more solemnity and uh, things need to be seen a little bit more seriously. Um, the way that he responded when he was the chair of the... Uh, COVID committee, you know, he, he would have been better to just take the smile off his face a little bit and to be a little bit more considered. He, even if he made the same points, he didn't need to look as if he was making hay while the sun shone. So that's now, right? But his yep. his ratings in the pre preferred Prime Minister states have never been good. So why doesn't he connect with voters? I don't know about that. I wonder if, uh, to some degree, they know him too well. When he came into Parliament first up, he was seen as, you know, a bright, shining star who beat Winston Peters out of Tauranga, in spite of what um, Bob the Builder had done the election before. But he absolutely caned at, um, Winston Peters of 10,000 votes, so that was pretty serious. He was given opportunities to be a young gun, uh, you know, up against Jacinda uh, back in 2008 when he came in. So he's been given a lot of... Um, Opportunities, and I wonder if, to some degree, the public had already made up their mind about him. And to another degree, I wonder if he is, if he sort of wasn't quite what was expected. And that, at, at that at the time that um, Bill English stood down, for instance, there was probably an expectation, to some degree, fueled by the media, that there would be a move to someone like Judith Collins. And Simon Bridges sort of came out of left field, and it was a little bit like, well. This isn't what we ordered. Um, and, and so there was sort of always a bit of dissatisfaction there in any event. And he didn't make, make big enough gains to start with. So it was, pr it was pretty tough. And remember, he came in as leader when Jacinda was always already a, pro a, um, a prime minister who was turning a lot of heads. So what does Todd Muller have that Simon Bridges doesn't? Um, well, I think um, much more than Simon Todd is a student of politics. He was leading the research unit under Jim Bolger. Um, he's very considered, quite a serious person. He's um, done quite a lot within the business community, and he's been well regarded before politics. So that's that. Um, and I think that a lot of people will um, 
align with him because he is a little bit considered and he's got a humility factor that Simon doesn't quite have. Um, albeit, um, you know, that's, that's the way it is. I guess the difference between National and Labour in these things is that in National, if you are seen to promote yourself and show your stuff, um, then you're seen as being disloyal to the leader. So that's why, you know, you don't have to get very far down the pack in the National Party for people to say, who's this? Because largely you sort of, um, you know, you hide your candle under a bushel um, uh, because any other any other tactic is seen as disloyal. And the person who's really only had licence to strut his stuff publicly is Judith Collins. So, if it go, regardless of the outcome, right, on Friday when this goes to the caucus, do they risk sort of becoming a little bit like Labour now that we've seen the workings behind and the fact that there's machinations? And uh, do, do they risk sort of firing through a whole bunch of leaders in a very short period of time? Because well, nobody's I really a winner. Hope, I really hope they don't. I, I mean, I think what, what anyone um, outside of National can see, and this is because those of us outside of National aren't panicked, um, it really is that the gains that Jacinda has made over the last um, few months have been huge. And if you consider that the election's already lost, why waste another good leader, possible leader, on, on that election? So, you know, um, that, that's, the, that's the real tension in the air. If you do nothing and the, and the polls stay where they are, National is in danger of losing a whole lot of MPs and they're good people, actually. Um, then if you if you make a quick change, you may still lose. You still, may still lose by maybe not so much and maybe not lose as many MPs, but would you put 100 bucks on them winning? And, and that's difficulty. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm still a card-carrying member of the party and, and I want National to win. Um, whether or not this is going to change that outcome... I sort of doubt it very much, um, but that's the cycle of politics. So where would you put? Gonna, where would you put right? your hundred bucks, Chester? Where would you put it? Your hundred bucks on on winning the election? No, on on winning the leadership first. Oh, winning the, yeah, it's it's these things are always really close to call. You know that that uh, historically, if you go back to the change from um, English to Brash. You know, there was sort of one vote in it and pledges had been given one way and then that person actually voted the other way and and we had the result we had. Um, so these things do come down to the wire and it's pretty dicey. I'm not really a betting man, but, you know, I, I would say I actually like both guys very much um, uh, and, and I, I think it's been sad for Simon that he's fallen on this particular time because I think any leader under National would have really been, sorry, any leader of the opposition under this under this crisis with uh, Labour in the ascendancy would, would struggle. And I think pretty much the, the public and the party would be pretty hacked off with anybody who was there because there was always going to be a downturn in the polls. Appreciate your time, Chester. That's Chester Burrows, who is a former National Party MP and, as he says, still a card-carrying member of the party.